especially telling children that that's important because they'll stare up at it endlessly. Um, let's see, what else can I cover here that I have? Uh, first sketches I did of the sun, oh gosh, back in the late 1990s at the Oregon Star Party, looking through my H-Alpha telescope, large sunspots I sketched. Progressed later to something like this one that was shown in NASA websites. Um, but photography is quite easy. I want people to understand that anybody can get a hold of a camera and learn how to use it in a matter of an hour or two with the proper instructions. Sitting down and sketching for four or five hours the moon's surface and the craters can take a whole night. And you can simply take a photograph in a matter of seconds. So there's no excuse for people not to be trying to use good cameras and do some kind of meaningful photography. It's quite simple. Uh, people can sit at a television all day or they can sit at a computer at work. They can easily learn how to use a camera. Uh, I've had people in the last few weeks ask me, now Mark, what time tonight will the solar eclipse be? They don't know that a solar eclipse is during the day. They're confusing it with a lunar eclipse. And they're thinking of only what they've seen in the past because many people have seen many lunar eclipses. And they're much more common, of course. They're talking about the one they like to use the old mystical term, the blood moon. Uh, have they seen the moon turn slightly orange or red during a total lunar eclipse? That's a completely different thing than a, a solar eclipse. Solar eclipses over your locale and region are much more rare. And most people will never see one in their lifetime. So I think there's a... Uh, other things I could cover here, there's so much I brought out here to talk about, but I don't think I can cover everything in the fast, cursory method I'm using here to go over things. Um, I was even going to mention the new Eclipse stamps, of course. This has nothing to do with observing, but I had to hold it up close to the camera so people can see it. And when you touch it, the moon turns bright. Isn't that amazing? From heat transfer from your skin. So you'll see the moon actually turn light. It's uh, chemical active stamps. Somebody tried to uh, describe that that wasn't actually accurate because uh, not too many people are going to see that happen in the sky. The moon's going to essentially look like a dark, very dark silhouette against the moon. Uh, only the best digital cameras will pick up the earth shine on the dark side of the moon facing us during the solar eclipse. And then there's... Uh there's books and other publications besides Astronomy Magazine and Sky and Telescope. I uh, was fortunate enough to come across some old astronomy magazines at our RCA, Rose City Astronomers Club meeting. Uh, former chief editor of astronomy, Richard Berry, signed this one for me. He gave these old ones away. They were like brand new, still in the boxes being shipped from 30 or 40 years ago. And I came across this one accidentally, didn't even know I had it until just about a month ago. Ironically, it's got the Voyager mission showing Jupiter's great red spot, which they're going down close today with the Juno spacecraft over Jupiter. You're going to see tremendous details about this in the news, up much closer than the old Voyagers could attain. Um, these actually look pretty impressive. I was not aware the Voyager got pictures this great. So I'm going to depart from the Eclipse talk here for a while and just go back to this old magazine because it does have, uh, lo and behold, I found these wonderful eclipse photographs from the same time I took mine in 79. And uh, I had that page ready to come up. Here it is. So these are the photos done on film cameras back in the 1970s, specifically 1979 when I took mine. And uh, there's some really great ones. There's a wide angle one, which I hope to get. I'll have another camera running off to the side, taking a wide angle image of the sky. So uh, I'll get something like this during totality in video. Uh, Close-ups through my actual cast screen telescope with a camera attached directly to the back will come out something like this about the aspect ratio you see of the eclipse sun here of the diamond ring effect filling this frame, although it's not an actual APS-C uh, rectangular frame like in a camera today. It's a square they just crop down, I think, for the purpose of printing in the magazine. Here's the, the, the sequence many people want to try to get. They want to get this, and this is very easy to do. You just stack these today in Photoshop. The crescent shapes are basically done with a white light filter, uh, a bader, the silver colored ones, the silver film you've seen them put over lenses, and the eclipse glasses are made of that. It does not show what the H-alpha shows, though, like you see in my sketch here through the H-alpha school.
or the H alpha picture. Um, set that aside here somewhere now. I don't know where it is, but yeah, you're not going to see an image like this through eclipse glasses or through white light filters. That H alpha filter that goes for about a thousand dollars, a small scope there in the middle, is one that most people haven't looked through. And I'm recommending that if people are out looking at the eclipse, you're going to get near where astronomers are, I'm sure. And I think it's important that you walk over to where they're working and at least ask some of them if they have an H alpha scope set up. The hydrogen alpha scopes uh, look similar to the small one I've got. They're mostly golden uh, finished tubes on the outside, they're like old fashioned brass telescopes. They're beautiful. The ones that are slightly bigger than mine go for anywhere from five to ten thousand dollars. This one was only a thousand, it was a small 40 millimeter. But it's essential enough that even 40 millimeters diameter that to get close ups of the sun like this that are quite detailed. And that's what you'll be seeing when I take a video through mine. But of course, it's going to be blocked with just the edges and the, uh, the diamond ring effect is what I'll be shooting. Uh, like you see in most, most of these where the sun is blocking or rather the moon's blocking out the sun into a, uh, the beautiful corona effects. And remember, this only lasts for two minutes. And this only lasts for maybe 10 or 20 seconds where you see the diamond ring effect. So these were great photos that people got very close to telescopes back in 79. And I was delighted to find this in one of the issues that Richard Berry had given away at the Rose City Astronomers a few months ago. Okay, I, I think I'm going to be competing too much with the noise and the traffic here, so... I made you this video again. The reason I put it together tonight was that uh, I wanted people to get the impression that there's much more to observing than simply using an iPhone. And you'll see in the new uh, Sky and Telescope issue, it's quite good. They show what can be done with an iPhone and these special, we'll call them rather toy attachment telephoto lenses they're putting onto an iPhone. It's not very impressive. When you see what the sun looks like with that, it's very it's bigger than you get with the actual cell phone, but it's very fuzzy looking, and it's not a well-defined photo that you would get with just a medium-priced DSLR, or even a smaller, it looks like a pocket camera that I'm using as my, uh, my Sony NEX series. Uh, you can move up to a full-frame Sony that compares with those DSLRs like Nikon and Canon, and the Sony that's the bigger one than this in a full-frame is called a Sony A7. Many friends have them. I'm considering buying one, but uh, a little larger body and uh, the Sony A7 bodies for the new ones go for about three to four thousand. So you're talking about a more professional full-size camera. With this, the old 80Xs are uh, affordable at only a few hundred to say six, seven hundred dollars for the, uh, the new A6000, which is the very popular one many people have today. Okay, I'm not going to compete with the uh, the traffic going by here much more, and I think I've said enough for today, so I'm going to cut it short, and I'll, uh, I'll continue with another video maybe before the 1st of August. Thanks for listening, and good luck on photographing the eclipse, or at least just viewing it.